uh, it is a pleasure to from the nations around the region. And we say thank you so much for taking the time to be here. And so tonight we're looking at the heart of God. And I have called it from his heart to our heart, to the heart of our spouse. And so just to quickly recap what we have been looking at for the past three nights, we started off by looking at the hand of God. And we saw where the hand of the Lord presented Eve to Adam. God was our first father giver. And in Isaiah 41.10, it says, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And we see that the hand of God reflects his power to save, his power to, to heal, to create and sustain. And we thank God for his hand, the power of his hand. We also looked at on the second night, the voice of God. Adam and Eve heard the voice of God together in the garden. John 10, 27 says, my sheep listen to my voice. The voice of God still speaks. He speaks expressly. He speaks clearly. And so we encourage our couples to select a time and place, a time of day that you will come together every day intentionally to be together with no distractions, no distractions. And I trust that this, uh, you're, you're working on this as couples. We also looked at the eye of God yesterday um, and we see that Adam and Eve tried to hide from the all seeing eyes of God. And Jeremiah 23, 24 reminds us that uh, no one can hide from God. He asks, can anyone hide himself in secret places that I cannot see him? So God sees us anywhere we are. And it is comforting to know that he sees us because there are four reasons why he watches us so intensely. It is to reinforce his love for us. It is to re regard our path. It is to remind us of his love. And so we need to appreciate the reasons why God loves us and watches us so carefully. And so tonight we're looking at from his heart to our heart, to the heart of our spouse. Genesis 2.18, as we continue our journey with Adam and Eve, says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. All right, can I hear the men say hallelujah? And God said, I will make him and help meet for him. Now, this does not mean that the idea of a companion for Adam suddenly presented itself to God. God never intended that man should be alone. The heart of God towards us is caring, compassionate, gracious and true. The Lord wants the very best for each and every one of us. But in order to walk in God's best for us, we need to obey what he says. You know, the word of God says that the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. But if you don't obey him and you decide to take your own step and go in your own direction and things happen, it doesn't mean that he wasn't ordering your steps. It just means that you were not obedient to what his directives were to you. So if we walk in the way that God maps out for us, it will, it will allow us to enjoy the very best that God has for us. God loves us. God loves each and every one of us with a deep, passionate love but we can only experience that if we are obedient to his instructions for us god's heart it reflects a number of things and we want to look at that tonight the first thing that god heart god's heart reflects is his compassion god's heart reflects his compassion in luke 7 13 we see the account of when he encountered the widow who was burying her son. It said, when the Lord saw the widow of Nain, his heart overflowed with sympathy. And as we look in similar passages in John, Jonah 4, verse 2, Jonah 4, verse 2 tells us that you are gracious. You are gracious and compassionate. You are a gracious and compassionate God. You are slow to anger 
and abounding in love. You know, where you see it talks about the love of God, it talks about his, his, his exceedingly great love. God loves us deeply and he wants us to experience that love. And we are to walk in his way. In Exodus 34, verse six, it tells us that God is compassionate again and gracious. He passed in front of Moses proclaiming the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. What a beautiful savior that we have access to. To be rich in love means that he has an abundant, overflowing supply of excess love. It means we cannot exhaust his love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all all he has made. If you are made by God, then you qualify to be the recipient of his compassion. And as the recipients of God's compassion, we have a duty of care to extend that same compassion to our spouse. Because we are the recipient of God's compassion, we are to be the couriers and carriers and channels of that compassion to our spouse or to those around us. Adam was without a companion. And the Lord declared that this was not a good thing. The God whose response after every stage of his creation declared that he saw that it was good, now acknowledged that Adam without a companion, it was not a good thing. This is the first acknowledgement that something was not good. It is not good that the man should be alone. It wasn't good. So God in his compassion, set things in motion. And we looked at that as we looked at the hand of God. He had the animals parade before Adam. The animals that paraded had their companions, but for Adam, there was no suitable companion found. God knew the nature of the companion that Adam needed, but he needed Adam to see that there was no suitable companion among the animal kingdom he would then have a deeper appreciation for the design, for the fit and the intellectual capacity of God's provision through the woman. Adam did not need to send God a list of the characteristics of the companion. God himself conceptualized, designed, detailed and delivered a companion for Adam from one of his bones. God knew the design and fit and intellectual capacity that you needed in a helpmate. I've heard people talk about writing a list of what they expect in a spouse. And, you know, as a teenager, I thought about it and I decided not to prepare a list. You know why? Because I said at that age, the perfect spouse that I desire at 18 or in my 20s is probably not the person suited for my journey in my 50s and 60s. And so I simply said, God, you know everything about me now and you know where I'm going and you know the kind of spouse that I need for life. I only had one request, one single request. As a musician, I asked the Lord to please let my husband be able to at least hold a note so that when he sings beside me, he's not singing off key. Well, the Lord went beyond my request because my husband not only holds a note, but he can harmonize as well. That's the kind of compassionate God that we have. You know, he takes care of all of us, all right? As he is compassionate and gracious to us, so too we need to extend that same grace and be compassionate and gracious to our spouses. Let us be kind to our spouses. You know, so many times we extend compassion to our co-workers, our bosses, even though our bosses might treat us horribly, we are kind to them. We're kind to the person in the supermarket. We're kind to the person at the gas station. We're kind to, the, to everybody. And we step inside the house and somehow the kindness garment just fell off. And we're so unkind. We say unkind words. We, we act unkind. You know, let us be kind to our spouse. Let us not snap at our spouses. Let us extend the same grace to them as we have received from the heart of God. Ephesians 4.32 says, be kind. So be kind to your spouse, 
even as the Lord has been kind to you? Are you displaying, are you extending the same degree of kindness and compassion that the Lord has given and extended and is showing to you? Are you showing that to your spouse? Be tender hearted to your spouse, even as the Lord has been tender hearted to you. God is gentle, God is forgiving. Be tender hearted to your spouse. Forgive your spouse just as Christ has forgiven you. So many times we hear of infidelity, and the first thing persons want to do is that's it. But God wants us to extend forgiveness. And that's what we say for better or for worse. But when the worst comes, we want to go. Forgive your spouse just as Christ has forgiven you. Suppose Christ treated us the way we treated our spouse or treated, you know, th there is something that's an issue and we just say, that's it. Christ didn't do that. With all that we had, with all the baggage and all the, 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 the dirty linen that we had, Christ died for us even before we were thinking about him. He died on the cross for our sins. And he has cleared, you know, one of the verses that impact my, my life, it's 2 Corinthians 5.21. It says, God poured our sin, our stuff, all our sin into Christ. And then he took Christ's goodness and poured it into us. Wow. As recipients of that kind of transaction, we need to extend similar transaction to our spouse. So God's heart, compassionate. The second thing about God's heart is that it's tender. His tender care. God's heart reflects his tender care and he is protective of his own. You know, when we looked at the eye of God, we see that we are the apple of his eye. And anyone who sticks their finger in Jehovah's eye, you know, it, it, affects, it affects them. He will deal with them. In Psalm 78, 72, it says, he cared for them with a true heart. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and he carries them close to his heart. In Zechariah 10, 12, it says, the Lord says, I will make my people strong with power from me. They will go wherever they wish and wherever they go, they will be under my personal care. Wow. Wow. What an assurance. It is because of God's personal tender care that he established even this 21 day intensive intervention for couples and this ministry. It is because of his care. It is because he wants to ensure that your marriages are not just, you don't just endure your marriage, but you enjoy it. Marriage is to be enjoyed. He wants to fulfill purpose through you. The, 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 our marriages are to reflect the relationship between Christ and the church. Is your marriage reflecting that kind of relationship? The unity, the love. You know, we hear about jealous husbands and jealous wives, but no one is as jealous of us as the Lord is. So the heart of God reflects his compassion. It reflects his tender care for us. Let us extend that same tender care to our spouses. Thirdly, the heart of God reflects his gentleness, his humility. Matthew eleven twenty nine 29 says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart. Wow. Can we exemplify that in our relationship with our spouses, with our significant others, with our family members, to be gentle, not harsh, not critical, but understanding and to be humble in heart. I want to challenge us to, to take this example from Christ and to work on this and, and, and have this expression through our own hearts. You know, let our lives reflect his essence, his character, his nature, his personality, his glory. Our lives, let our lives characterize what God is to us. Isaiah 42, three says, a bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not extinguish. God cares for each and every one of us. The Lord not only took note 
of Adam's situation, but he had a plan to ad address the specific need that Adam had. God has a specific re response to our specific need, but we have to take the time to spend it with him. The heart of God is rich in love towards us. God's love seeks out the very best for us. Everything that we need is wrapped up in his provision. Just as we are the recipient of God's gentleness, we are to be channels, couriers, conduits of this gentleness to our spouse. Love them. Speak tenderly to them. There was a prophetic word that the Lord gave uh, to, to, concerning marriage. It's called God's first institution. And I'm just going to share what he said to us concerning his institution of marriage. And he said, this is the first institution I made, but I am not seeing love in most marriages. No wonder couples have not been friends to each other. Rather, I have seen slaves. My heart is pricked, especially among ministers, because they divorce and remarry with ease. I hate divorce. Who gave them the doctrine? It has been the order of the day, marrying and divorcing. Where is the love? Because the homes are decayed, that is why the church is decayed. But today, I am rebuilding the altar of marriage. Most of my daughters, their hearts are hardened. I see hardened hearts. This day, I ask you to give me your heart. You whose heart is full of burdens, come unto me with those burdens, for I know your grief. I know your sorrows. I know, I understand. But do not fight for yourself. Today, take my word. Do not throw it aside and do not handle it with your fingertips. For I can see that some of you are still hardened. Your mind is made up. You don't understand. But I say, understand. Drop every argument. Drop every resentment. Come on to me. Lay your burdens at my feet and I will give you peace. I will give you rest. For those who are engaged, he said, learn to marry me first. Learn to obey me first. Learn to submit to me first. Yes, then you will borrow a lead from me to marry your spouses well. For I am the first husband. I am the first husband. And when you submit to me, you will receive what you want. I've come to heal the hearts that are in pain. I've come with restoration. I have come with refinement. I've come to do a new thing. I've come to do a new thing. I have come with a new thing. Do not go back with the old principle, but adopt a new principle, and then you shall find rest. Hallelujah. The Lord told me that the quality of one's wife is an indication of one's life. i say it again. The quality of one's wife is an indication of one's life. There is purpose behind the united manifestation of the two becoming one flesh. The explosive success that is released when a man and a woman joined in holy matrimony unite as one force is phenomenal. It's called a mystery. The principle works irrespective of who the couple is. Unity represents the oneness of the Trinity. There is power in agreement. What is the enemy preventing you as a couple from accomplishing on this earth? Because he is trying to divide you. He has successfully brought division to couples because he knows what a couple in one accord can accomplish. Examine the qualities of your wife and realize that she has resources to help you with your vision. Recognize that God has handpicked these qualities just for you. I encourage you today, ensure that you exemplify the qualities of God's heart from God's heart to your heart to the heart of your spouse. 
from God's heart, a heart of compassion. Exemplify that as you receive that compassion from God, extend that compassion to your spouse. From the heart of God, tender care, protection. As you have received that tender care from the heart of God to your heart, extend that tender care and protection to your spouse. Gentleness. As you have received God's gentleness and humility from his heart to your heart, I encourage you tonight to extend that same gentleness, that same humility to the heart of your spouse. As we prepare our hearts for prayer tonight, I want you to just take the time to let this song be your prayer. Let it be the prayer of your heart. And let us take the time as we spend it. And allow the Lord to do that surgery that is needed on your heart today so that you can receive from him all that you need so that you can be the conduit, be the channel, be the courier of his compassion, his tender care, and of his gentleness. Hallelujah. God bless you. you. You are our God. And we look to you, God, who is the author and the finish of our faith. But not just this, God, but you are our example, oh God, of how we ought to treat and how, oh God, with one another. You are Oh God, the epitome, oh God, of understanding, of example, oh God, of how we ought to relate one with another, God. We are thankful, God, that, 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 that our education, our understanding, oh God, of, of how we relate, God, does not come from the philosophy, oh God, and the wisdom of men, but it comes from you today. So, Lord God, I, I, I pray for couples everywhere. First, I pray, Father, that as this is a new year, that it would begin to be a new season in our lives, dear God, in our relationship, in our mentoring one of another, in our love and our expression and our compassion one for another. I pray a new season, a new season, God, of forgiveness, oh God, a new season that will bring healing of hurts, that will bring restoration of life, knowing, God, uh, that you hate divorce, you hate separation, and when you have created this thing called marriage and relationship, you said, therefore, we should leave, oh God, our father and our mother and eat to our our wives, dear God. And, and, and so, and the two shall become one. I pray, God, that, oh God, that we will not lose, oh God, the vision, the understanding, oh God, of this unity, of this mystery, that we will not lose sight, oh God, or of laying hold, or even laying hold, oh God, of that word that says we are one day, Father. I rebuke in the name of Jesus. Oh God, every iota of thought, oh God, of desire, oh God, of, 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 of separation, oh God, but I pray a return, oh God, to your original intent in the name of Jesus. I pray a restoration of your original intent and purpose, oh God, for man and woman, for husband and wife, in the name of Jesus. And I pray all that have created, that which have caused, oh God, uh, uncomfortableness, dear God, that, oh God, that be removed in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, for the new season, that this year, God, that it would be a year, oh God, a new year, a new season, oh God, of embracing each other in, in a new way, in a new light, oh God, of beginning to understand one with another, 
in the name of Jesus, Father, that which we have failed in the former year, in the past year, oh God, let it be in the past that we begin the new year with a new, oh God, desire, a, a, a new, oh God, perspective, oh God, a new, oh God, uh, yeah, a, a whole new drive in how, oh God, we be uh, appreciate and love and the very understanding of what love is, oh God, which brings with it, oh God, reconciliation, which brings with it, oh God, healing, which brings with it forgiveness. Oh God, let it not be once said amongst us that there is irreconcilable differences. Let it not be once said, oh God, that there is, oh God, no forgiveness. Father, let it not in this new season be once mentioned of these, oh God, atrocious, oh God, words in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray today that we would find within ourselves as we have found in you, oh God, the spirit of compassion in the name of Jesus, that we may forgive one another. That we may, oh God, hallelujah, that we may, oh God, be compassionate one with another. That we would submit one to another, God, in the name of Jesus. And so, Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that in this year, in this new season, that they, oh God, will be a blossoming. I speak to every marriage within our airshot, dear God, within the voice, oh God, I declare in the atmosphere and on this platform, oh God, in this season, this be a season, this be a year, oh God, of blossoming, oh God, of marriage, oh God, that will be bountiful, oh God, marriage is being fruitful again, marriage is being filled with love again, oh, oh God, Pray for the blooming of marriages again. Oh God, wherever we, oh God, the, 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 our voices are being heard. We are praying, oh God, for the blossoming, for the flowering, for oh God, the blooming again in the name of Jesus. And even, oh God, the stirring. I pray for a stirring. I pray for a stirring again in the name of Jesus. Oh God of the time that we will remember when we used the data, when we used the Lord God, let there be that stirring again. Let the fire burn again. Let the fire consume us with compassion. Oh God, hallelujah. With fire one for another. In the name of Jesus, let the flames not go dim. Oh God, but let there be increase in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, that we seem to be out, that we seem to be going dim, shall not go dim. We speak life to the fire, oh God. We speak life to the relationship, life to the fire, oh God, that will burn with passion one for another. We are not just praying to thee. God, that marriage will exist or survive, oh God, but we are praying, oh God, that relationships will be so, oh God, stern, will be so, oh God, burn with desire, with compassion, oh God, that it will bring flavor and life in the name of Jesus, and so tonight, oh God, everywhere, everywhere, oh God. God, uh, marriage that are hurting, I declare healing, I declare your healing and the restoration of your heart, of your life, uh, oh God, in the name of Jesus, uh, the restoration of marriage lives, uh, the restoration of the passion, the restoration of the passion, the restoration of the passion in the name of Jesus, uh, that lies and relationship will burn again, God. With passion, we are praying, oh God, 
this season, this new year, oh God, that which is in the past will remain in the last year, dear God. That, oh God, all the hurts, the bitterness, the shame, the disgust, the failures, the disappointment, the dysfunction, Lord God, we put that in the past. Oh God, and now I'm into the sea of forgetfulness tonight. Oh God, as we, oh God, forgive one another. Oh God, as we forgive each other, dear God, in the name of Jesus. And God, we turn a whole new page, a whole new, oh God, uh, 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 avenue today we go down a new street and this is this time we go oh god hand in hand with you god because we know father that the example that we have is that which you have oh god given to us uh, of forgiveness of compassion oh god of relationship uh, oh my god and, and, and so tonight in the name of jesus we go hand in hand, God. We go hand in hand in the name of Jesus with the example that you have given, Father. With the example that you have laid upon us. And not just the example, but the instructions. I pray, Father, truly, that we will not heed the words of men and the lies of spirits, Oh God, that dare to deceive us, that we will no longer give heed to seducing spirits in the name of Jesus today and doctrines of devils that have told us, oh God, that this is okay, that oh God, it is all right to do this, it is all right to separate, it is all right to move away, it is all right to take chances. Oh God, we pray that we shall cease, oh God, and bring into subjection every thought, oh God, to the your obedience in the name of Jesus so that we may walk worthy, not just of you, but of each other, God. But of each other in the name of Jesus. So God, we are praying for you to arise tonight, to arise, oh God, in our lives, oh God, in our marriages, oh God, that will bring, oh God, a boost, oh God, that will bring life, that, oh God, that will bring vim and vigor and vitality, God, that will bring revival, oh God, and restoration, oh glory to God, in the name of Jesus, I pray today that, oh God, that we, oh God, our marriages will be will, 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 will so alive again. That the things, God, the things that we used to do, God, that would have enhanced, built, oh God, and stirred for us to remember those things, God. I pray for us to remember the former days, the former things that we used to do, that, that, that used to create, oh God, uh, 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 and stir the relationship that used to create, oh God, the excitement. Oh God, where those where we used to go for drive and when we used to go for dinner and when we used to bring gifts. Oh God, the things, oh God, that we would remember those days, that we remember and return, oh God, to those things that brought life the marriage God when we used to sit down and chat, when we used to lie down and talk, oh God, I pray this day in the name of Jesus that we will return. That we will remember and return to those days in the name of Jesus. So God, let the marriages live. There are those that are struggling right now. Oh God, but I pray that they would find the fortitude in you, God. That they would find re re God, that they will find resilience in you, God, in the name of Jesus, knowing that your strength is made perfect in our weakness, knowing that your grace is sufficient. Father, we admit that some of us have fallen, but oh God, we get up today. Oh God, we get up in forgiveness and with encouragement from our spouses. God, oh God, as we as we ask each other, oh God, as we seek forgiveness from one another dear god because of our failures because of our shortcomings but oh god we declare today 
that it shall that it is in the past, that it is in the no more, and God, that we are going forward in the name of Jesus, that we are going forward, oh God, in this new season, that this is a new season, oh God, of, of life, of bringing forth, of blossoming. That I declare in every marriage that is within our voice tonight, I speak blossoming, I speak fruitfulness, I speak life to your marriage right now, wherever you are. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, uh, that you shall not fail again, that you shall not come short again, in the name of Jesus, that you shall not give up yourself to loss again, that you shall not give yourself to loss again, in the name of Jesus, a break. Spirit, uh, oh God of lust that have, oh God that have entangled you in the name of Jesus and I free you tonight uh, I break its power over you and the pornography that had drawn you in the name of Jesus I release you tonight I free you in Jesus name I break its power and its hold over you in the name of Jesus and so God, today we praise you for victory because you cause us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. God, you made us more than conquerors tonight. We are a conquering people. God, these marriages today are conquering marriages, God. I declare life and fruitfulness every marriage in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless. Hallelujah.